So coming off the heels of last week's winter storm video, which by the way, thank you all so much for the, the kind words and positive feedback on that episode. A ton of work went into that one. So to hear that it was enjoyed by so many really does mean a lot to me. So thank you for that. And many of the comments and questions from that video was where the, uh, the idea for this week's episode was born, all about maximizing our time and being as productive as possible while on location. I mean, let's face it, most folks aren't able to, to globe trot around five to seven days a week for photography. The, the vast majority of us are the, the weekend warriors that are lucky to get out a couple times a month. So being as productive with our time when the opportunity to, to get out with our cameras presents itself is of the utmost importance. Now, I'm an efficiency nut, which is yet another carryover from my many years spent in the corporate world, but I'm always striving to be as efficient as possible with my time in order to, to maximize my efforts, and, and that carries over to my photography as well. And in this video, I wanna share with you the, the seven things that I've changed over the years when on location that has really enabled me to, to be way more productive with my time, which in turn has also improved my photography as well. Now, to jump right into it, the very first thing is something that I call handheld starter. And this is something that I uh, got a lot of questions about in last week's video because there's a scene where I'm just kind of walking all over the place without a tripod, just a camera in hand, just kind of framing up a shot. And I think that it's one of the, the biggest changes that I've made is when I first got started, I would go out to a location and have my tripod in hand and have my camera in hand as well. And within just maybe a few seconds or maybe a minute, I had already plopped my tripod down, attached the camera to the tripod, and started kind of composing a shot. And yeah, sometimes that does work, but you're a lot less nimble when you have your tripod attached to your camera. And you're a lot less, I should say, likely to start moving around or start explore other angles of a particular composition. It's much more freeing and a much more fluid practice to have just your camera in hand and just moving it around and framing up your shot, getting a little bit lower, getting a little bit higher, swing to the left, swing to the right, you're much more apt to explore different compositional angles when you don't have a tripod attached to your camera. So handheld starter is something that I believe is a, is a huge time saver. And once again, it's also going to help you improve your photography as well, because at the end of the day, it's not all about saving time while on location. You want to be productive, but at the end of the day, the the, I guess the real barometer or, or measuring stick, if you will, is whether or not it's improving your photography. And that's something that has definitely improved my photography as well from exploring additional compositions is just to hand hold in the very beginning, way before you ever even think about locking down a, a composition by pulling out a tripod. Now, the second thing is something that I call don't hammer away. And this is huge for me because I, and I've talked about this quite a few times when I first started, I would find a composition and I would get locked into that composition and I would just hammer away at that composition for 30 minutes, maybe an hour. But my entire trip would be predicated on that one composition. And here's a, a good example right here where this is my entire SD card from the, uh, the on location video last week, the, uh, the winter storm video. And this was the very first composition right here. And typically in the past, I would come up with probably, gosh, I don't know, probably 50 images that look just like this right here. But now I'm really focused on not hammering away. And a question that I get asked a lot, especially on uh, on workshops, is how do you know which composition to go for first? You know, we, we know that we, we don't want to really just lock in on one and then just focus on that and then leave. Being more productive with our time, how do we know which composition is the one to start with first? And for me, I always ask myself, you know, which composition or which scene is going to be dependent on the sky the most? And that's the image that I'm going to focus on first. And then as soon as the, the color in the sky or maybe the sunset occurs or maybe the, the, uh, the sunrise occurs, and once that sky isn't quite as photogenic any longer, then move on to maybe a more intimate scene. And that's kind of how I determine which one is first, but not locking into a composition and just hammering away at it. Because at the end of the day, you're going to go home with 50 or 100 versions of one image. And then at the end of the day, you're going to end up with just one photograph. And yeah, sometimes it's the, the way to go, but I find that uh, you're a little bit more productive when you just kind of get the shot, get the, the, the image that you, you want, your, your image A, if you will, that has the best color in the sky, and then move on to something else. Now, the third thing is something that I call comp altering. And this is a big one as well. And it has to do with, it kind of is a, a segue from the, the last tip of uh, not hammering away. But comp altering is basically, you know, when you, when you get your, your composition set and you're, you're, you know, you're firing away and you're capturing images that you like, 
alter it a little bit. And I'm not talking about just loosening your ball head and just shifting it to the left or shifting it to the right. That's more like, I guess, comp refinement. But I'm talking about literally moving, going to the left side, going to the right side, if you can, of course, maybe going behind your subject. Of course, it depends on what you're photographing, of course, but completely changing the way that you are viewing your seam, that's comp altering. And that means getting low or getting high, swinging around to the left, but just getting a variety of images from that particular location is definitely going to help you become more productive. And a lot of times when you get home from location, the composition that you thought you liked the most, it ends up not being the right, the one that, uh, that uh, entices you the most when you get home, because you're going to be thinking completely different when you're behind a computer versus when you're behind the camera on location. So getting as much variety when on location is, is of the utmost importance. And like I mentioned a minute ago, here is the SD card from that trip. And this is a good example right here. There's a lot of alterations in the scene. You know, I started right here and I like this kind of branch running across the top. I felt that that kind of created a little bit of natural framing in the scene. And then I kind of wanted to include these other branches up here. So I started working with that and I didn't enjoy that. And then I said, Ooh, I really like the kind of the play on this tree leaning over here. And I like the balance and the story that that told. So I kind of played with that a little bit, zoomed out. See now this is kind of an example of comp refinement where I'm just basically kind of zooming out, giving myself a little bit more real estate. If I wanted to crop this differently when I get home, I wouldn't really consider this comp altering or anything. This is just making a very subtle change. But as I kind of just flip through these here, you can see that there's just a subtle difference in a lot of these right here. This is just more like the comp refinement right through there. But if I come up here, you can kind of see where I kind of ended up right through here. And you can see how there's little changes here. Just kind of leveling out my camera some messing with the exposure. And that's a completely different composition right there. Trying to get a little bit more creative just to see if there's anything that I might like better with that particular scene right there. So comp altering is very, very, is a, which, how do you say, is a very good way to be more productive and more efficient with your time and get a variety when you get back on location. Now, the fourth thing is something that I call changing conditions. And changing conditions is usually light or fog or mist or the, the color in the sky changing or, or uh, you, know, the, you know, the color coming from the, the blue hour of the sun rising or the sun setting. Those are kind of changing conditions and those are things to really focus on. And the reason I bring that up is this is a, an image from the, that video that I didn't share in the video because I ended up not really liking it. But for this one, I didn't really change the composition a whole lot, but the light in the background is what was changing. You can really see it if you look in this area right through here. You can see that the light was kind of coming in and coming out. And that's really what I was focused on. So I didn't really change a lot with the composition at that time. I was really focused on capturing the changing conditions, the changing light. I didn't know when the best light was gonna occur. I didn't know if I could even tell on location what the best light lighting scenario was for this composition. But I knew that if I just captured a series of images with that light kind of dancing across the background, I could then go back and post and figure out exactly which one of those scenarios is, is the best when I can view it on a bigger screen. because. Let's face it, seeing these things on the back of your on the back of your camera isn't always the, the most ideal way to uh, kind of evaluate or, or analyze a, a photograph. Now, the fifth, uh, I guess these are tips or suggestions, is something that I call scene within a scene. And this is a big one for me. And it basically has to do with when you find a composition, you find a subject you like. So for me, it was this tree. And this tree, you know, it's covered in snow. All the branches were covered in snow. All the pine needles are covered in snow had a nice um, uh, sky in the background. But what is the scene within that scene? What is the composition within that composition? And it's really just kind of a, a mindset and it has to do with um, storyboards as well. So when you get on location and you find your scene, your, your image A, your shot A, and then you ask yourself, you know, is there a scene within the scene? Is there a composition within this composition? How can I tell this story better? And if you start to say like, okay, I wanna get a, you know, a, a more intimate detail of this tree, or maybe a, a lower perspective of this tree because I'm ultimately trying to create three images to tell a story of this location. When you have that mindset rolling around your head, it's impossible to not think like that, to not think of, of how can I better tell the story? How can I come up with additional photographs that support my very first image? And, and, I, and I hope that makes sense. Sometimes these things are kind of hard to convey over, over video as, not, as opposed to in person, but it's something I talk about at workshops a lot. It was, looking for that scene within a scene, looking for that composition within a composition. And from my experience, there is almost always 
a scene within a scene. There's almost always a, a composition within your main composition. So thinking like that and thinking about creating a series of images to create that storyboard, because one, that's going to help your support. It's going to help support your main image, but two, it's going to create more photographs for you. And that's ultimately going to improve your, your photography as well. Now, the sixth tip is something that I call work it. And it's exactly what the, the tip suggests is just working the scene. This has to, a little bit to do with, um, with the handheld starter, except you're just moving everywhere. And it's something that has to, this occurs really after you've kind of been on location for a little bit of time, handheld starter is really something that you do in the very beginning, but working the scene is something that you, once you kind of get into the groove and kind of the, the flow of what you're doing, just working it, just like a portrait photographer works a, uh, a, a, a client during a, a portrait session. They're moving all over the place. It's a very fluid exercise and just moving, getting on your knees, getting maybe on your stomach on the ground, getting high, swinging left, swinging to the right, but really work that scene. There's a couple um, uh, clips from that uh, last week's video where I'm just kind of moving all over the place to the left, to the right, just working that scene to see if there's something that excites me, if there's something that catches my eye, catches my attention, that is gonna help support the very first shot. And that very first shot, if uh, you don't know what I'm talking about, is this right here. These are the images I took in the very beginning. These are all just raw photographs here. None of these are edited or cropped. But I knew that this, this scene here was gonna be the composition that was the most dependent on the sky. And this was gonna be the one that I wanted to focus on first because the sun was rising, the color in the sky was gonna be changing very quickly, the light was gonna be changing quickly. And I wanted to capture that because the sky was required to pull this composition off. So once I got this scene taken care of, then I can move on to something like this, where the sky is not in the photograph, and the sky doesn't really matter in this scene. The light was still good, nice diffused light, but the sky is not anywhere in these uh, photographs. So that's how I ended up focusing on that grand scene first, or the larger scene, because it was dependent on the sky. So working the scene, moving all over the place, and kind of picture yourself as a portrait photographer, and your subject is your client, and really work that scene. You'll come away with a lot of different uh, variety, and more than likely more keepers as well. And the seventh tip, and, and I know that you have, uh, if you've been into outdoor photography for any amount of time, you've already heard this, but it's something that I call explore before, and it has to do with composition scouting. Not always can we get to the location before we're there. Sometimes we're traveling to a location that we've never been to. But if you can get to that location before, absolutely go there before. Scout out some subjects you like. You don't have to find the exact composition, but you could say, oh, I love this tree. Or, I love this winding river through these trees or, or whatever the scene is. Just that way when you get there, especially if you're there before the sun rises, when it's dark, you can get to that location much quicker. And it's just kind of, for me at least, it creates a much less stressful scenario, creates a much less uh, anxious type of uh, a situation when you already know exactly the scene that you're going for, and it helps you just become more familiar with that area as well. And if you're traveling to a location that you've never been to before, Google Earth is your absolute friend. You can look up anything pretty much in the world and get a really good feel of a landscape before you ever even get there. So becoming more familiar with your location before you set foot there is absolutely imperative and it can really help your overall uh, overall photography as well because a lot of times when you get on location you don't have a ton of time to just wander around and, and 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 scout out compositions a lot of times that you're there before the sun rises and maybe you only have 30 minutes or maybe you only have 10 minutes so time is of the essence so being familiar of uh, with your area as possible will definitely help you out in the long run so those are seven things that i've changed over the years I pretty much did the exact opposite of all seven of those items when I first got started. And I've since done a complete 360. Was that a 180? I did a, I completely changed my mindset on all of those. And it has really helped me to become way more efficient, way more productive and on location. And now when I come back from a particular location, my goal is always to come away with three keepers to create that storyboard that helps support that main image. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's always the goal. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat, but coming up with those three images to support that main image is always the, the top priority for me. And I think that one creates storyboards and two creates more photographs from a location. So when I first started, my goal was one keeper from every, uh, every location. And yeah, that that's great as well. But I think being, being as productive as possible is always a good thing, especially like I mentioned this in the beginning, 
Most people don't have the opportunity to stay to, to be out in the great outdoors, you know, five to seven days a week with photography. Our time is very limited. And if some, most people, you know, you might only get out a few times a month. So how can you capture as many, uh, or I should say, create as many keepers as possible? I think that is what is most important. So I do hope that at least one of those seven things is something that maybe you never heard of before. Or maybe you didn't think about it quite the same way. Just something that you can apply to your landscape photography moving forward that will help you become more efficient the next time you are on location. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, possibly share the video with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you all next Wednesday. Bye.